Alpina Bahn is one of the most notable traveling roller coasters in the world. This Schwarzkopf coaster often travels the German fair circuit, and I've been lucky enough to have ridden this coaster at two separate fairs. But is this elusive coaster worth seeking out? Find out in this review of Alpina Bahn. This coaster is built by Schwarzkopf for Oscar Bruch, and it premiered back in 1983. At the time, it was the world's largest traveling roller coaster, that is until Olympia Looping debuted in 1989. The coaster had a bit of an identity crisis in its early years. It was known as Himalaya Bahn for its first few years, then was named Achterbahn, which is the German word for roller coaster, in 1987. The ride was then renamed Alpina Bahn in 1998, and the coasters retained that name ever since. This coaster's presentation is great for a portable coaster. The purple track and green supports look fine by day, but the ride really comes alive at night with the rainbow lights in the first few elements and the lights on the trains. And I love this ride's entrance. You have this classic chalet with some characters. As with most European fares, you will not find a pay one price option. You need to pay per ride. I think it costs roughly 6 or 7 euros if I remember correctly as of 2022. I've experienced this coaster both at Dusseldorf's Rheinkirmes and Munich's Oktoberfest. Both fairs have been absolutely packed. Despite this, Alpina Bahn has been a near walk-on. That's because of how efficiently this coaster is operated. The ride can run up to 5 trains, each seating 20 riders. That not only benefits the consumer who can board quickly, but it also allows the operators to maximize their throughput and revenue. You will not see any stacking here. The trains will be in near constant motion. Part of that is because of how the ride is honestly overstaffed. And part of that is because the simple lap bars are easy to check. You won't find any extra seat belts here. The ride received new trains from Gerslauer a few years ago, and if you've ridden Hershey Park Super Duper Looper in recent years, you'll be very familiar with these trains. They feel like the classic Schwarzkopf ones right down to the minimalistic lap bar. I was a bit nervous the crew wouldn't allow me to wait for a specific seat, but they had no issues as long as you don't slow down boarding for others. Since you're paying per ride, you will want the best seat, and I think that's easily the back row. You get the best airtime and laterals there. Once dispatched, you climb the curved 89 foot or 27 meter tall lift hill. The views are obviously dependent on the fare, but I'm willing to bet you're going to get a great view of the midway to your side. At the top, you have this small little dip, but then you rise up and approach the main drop, an 85 foot or 26 meter tall twisted plunge. While you won't get any airtime here, the back row is in for a treat. They get some crazy laterals halfway down the drop. If you don't hold on, you'll be viciously flung sideways. Then everyone gets blasted with strong positives in the valley. This coaster pulls a maximum of 4.8 Gs. I'm not sure where it occurs though because there are several forceful valleys. The next hill is a giant camelback. Those up front get some weak floater airtime, but it's even better in the back you get strong floater airtime that's far more sustained as well. It's weird, but very nice to get sustained floater airtime on a Schwarzkopf. The pullout is super compact and rapidly blasts riders with positives. Then you twist upwards and subtly bank to the right, again getting some laterals. You then traverse another sizable drop, and if you're in the back, this one will give a weak pop of airtime. The resultant valley offers another dose of positive Gs, and then you twist upwards into a mid-course brake run. The turn to this element is super sharp, so you'll get some strong laterals up front. The second half kicks things off with a relatively shallow S-drop, but the pullout again has some nice positives. You then rise up into yet another S-drop that rises nearly identically to the prior one. You then sharply twist upwards into another mid-course. This transition gives another strong lateral jolt for all. Next is a small dip that really doesn't do too much, but it shortly leads into a bank drop. It had great laterals as I expected, but it also gives a little pop of airtime for those in back. You then twist into this awesome S hill. The front gets nice floater airtime, but those in back get some ejector airtime as you're yanked over the drop. This moment seemingly comes out of nowhere after the repetitive twists and turns. This hill leads into a final helix that has some good positive Gs, and then you hit the final brakes, ending the 2,986 foot or 910 meter long coaster. It really is impressive to see a coaster this long at a carnival. The ride is fairly well paced because it holds its speed well and it also has engaging elements. 
But what about the smoothness? Wouldn't a ride that's been assembled and disassembled this many times get rough? Not at all. This ride is super smooth. I could ride it all day, but that would burn a massive hole in my wallet. So what would I rate Alpina Bond? I would give this Travelin' Schwarzkopf an 8 out of 10. This is a great coaster for a fare and a good coaster overall. The ride is smooth and very forceful start to finish. The positives on the pullout and transitions prevent dead spots. Then the ride pops in a few surprising and satisfying moments of laterals and airtime for variety. Just make sure to ride this in the back for the best experience. This is one of my favorite traveling coasters without a doubt and it's a must ride if you see it at a fair. The two I know it routinely visits are Dusseldorf's Rheinkermes in the summer and Munich Oktoberfest in the fall. So those are my thoughts on Alpina Bahn, the traveling German roller coaster. Have you ridden this Schwarzkopf? How do you think it stacks up to the other portable coasters out there? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.